So I discovered my red knight employees are my family, family I didn't even know existed. And you know what they did? Even with earth at stake and all, they didn't want me to hide in their home until the crown dropped on my silly little head. They didn't want to risk that precious little safe haven. I suppose now, years later, I can sort of understand it, but at that time I was furious for being kicked out after years of being lied to. My anger was building to an absolute point of no return when Blackie reached out to me in my mind and this is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 27, Emotional Connection So, correct me if I'm wrong. But I suppose I'm the most rightful heir at this moment. So all I have to do is stay hidden until my birthday. Make sure I stay here with you in the other realm. And in 12 days the crown will be mine. It would just appear on my head? The concept sounded strange to Nadek. And the solution to the threat of the end of the earth too easy. The sinking feeling settled inside of her and she almost faltered, mentioning the crown being hers. She definitely hadn't had enough time to come to terms with all of this. Only yesterday she confirmed to herself she was a princess, and in twelve days she would be something like a queen, and inherit a bunch of all-powerful magic. Despite her internal turmoil and the other smoldering emotion in the background, she didn't miss the look between her aunt and uncle. What? Craddock nodded towards her husband. Steetim still shot awkward glances at Petut, his eyes blinking, swallowing roughly whenever he did. Petut was aware of it, but ignored it. For once he didn't utter any rude words, but pretended to be absorbed in petting Kitty. Nedek had seen a shock at hearing of her uncle's death, so she knew he followed the conversation closely. We're very happy to see you alive, Nedek, and you are welcome to take a bath and stay the night. He paused, looking over at Patat again before glancing towards Kradek. His wide eyes eventually rested on the table. But it... Wouldn't be a good idea to stay here longer. This is not a good shelter. They, we don't know how, obviously have figured out something about you in the Red Knight Rouse. They might know of us, and you see, this is our house. You understand? We've been living here in relative peace for a long time. We've always promised your parents to take care of you and followed their instructions meticulously. But we can't put more at stake. We'll give you the box they left for us and much of what you needed to know is in there. Surely you understand, Nady. Oh, that nickname. It slapped her right in the face. Her mom used to call her that. How dared her aunt use it? How dared they do this to her? They'd just abandon her? After all this? After lying to her for three years? They wouldn't even let her stay in their home? No support at all. This is supposed to be family. Come in, Nadek. You helping will I. Blackie's voice boomed in her head. Before she knew what it meant, a thunderous sound came from above and outside. The grumble and clatter of bricks on the ground overwhelmed every other sound. People screamed. A whoosh of wind preceded the head of Blackie barging through the open window, splintering the frame and breaking the glass. A few bricks came loose, tumbling along a side table to the floor in slow motion. Dust pelted the air. Pots clanged in the kitchen next door. 
Stephen fell back and smashed to the ground, chair included. Craddock ducked down, taking shelter beneath the table before Blackie's head came through the window. Kitty dug in his claws, making Patat yelp. Nidek blinked. She waved her hand in front of her, dispelling the dust. She quirked an eyebrow at Blackie, who looked sheepish now that she saw Nadek wasn't in any trouble. Nadek didn't know how she always managed to convey a world of emotion in her reptilian face. Blackie plunked her head down on the table. It creaked in distress, but held on. Stephen knelt behind his toppled chair, peeking out from behind. What happened, Blackie? Nadek asked it out loud, making it clear to the others that she could talk to the dragon, and, despite destroying part of their house, she was friendly. Heat fell die from you. Pulse did it. Never felt before. You in trouble. I thought. The sending hesitated. Not real heat. It was. She slightly cocked her head, still on the table. Kitty detached herself from Patat's lap, gave Blackie's snout a couple of headbutts, climbed on top and formed a fluffy cat ball between the horns. It won Nadak some time to think. Anger. Blackie had been feeling Nadek's rising rage. Another new development in the dragon communication. She wondered if Blackie would be able to feel emotions from everyone if she wanted to, or if they had a special bond. With that... Burning grounds! What did she do that grounding for? But that jumped in the air to fly and vibrated his whole body, ridden himself of the dust. Steetum still hid behind his toppled chair. Much good that would do against a dragon. And Craddock slowly crawled from under the table. She appeared to have regained a modicum of control, although Nader could see it was merely a facade. You! She swallowed, purposely keeping her eyes on Nader. You can communicate with the dragon? Nedak nodded. Unbelievable, the other woman whispered. But is your blood must be very strong in you. Sidem's voice came from behind the chair. What does that mean? Surely this is nothing but a dream. None of this can be real. Truly, first a Gorwak, then a dragon. Can you stop pretending to talk to that Gorak now? Those harsh sounds can't possibly mean anything. He sounded overwhelmed and on the brink of hysteria. Not a dream, Nidak mumbled at the same time Patat said. Burning right, they can understand me when I speak gorish. He rolled his liquid black eyes. When he spoke next, Nidak could hear something had changed but couldn't say what exactly. I forgot most humans don't burn and speak our dripping language. That's what bloody happens when you get isolated for so grounding long. Or I should have burning realized that's what's burning different about you. He glanced at Nadek. Perhaps that's how I guessed you were from the same dripping blood as Yodak. Yodak, her late uncle, she assumed. So languages are easy for us? She addressed Craddock again, who had carefully righted her chair and sat down a good distance from the table. Yes, yes, he shows naturally have the ability to understand and speak all or many of the languages. But that's not important right now. Why is there a live dragon's head on my table? With that, her calm mask broke a little. Her voice sounded almost more hysterical than Stetum's. She uttered a nervous giggle. Seeing Patat was a surprise, a big surprise, but I could still accept that. and knew he was real before. But this? 
Dragons aren't supposed to be real. Certainly, it's always been said that one of our family's lines was talking to dragons, just like you have the skipping line and I have the need line. She was talking really fast now, as if that could make up for the situation she was in. Every one of us has one, two or three lines, like a little trinket of the squares, triangles and lines, all but the one who gets the wooden water crown. They get it all. So I suppose you have the skipping and the dragon line, but that's not what it's called. I don't remember the actual name of the line because they were supposed to be a myth, not able to break my house. Her tone of voice gradually rose at the last sentences, with the last word sounding more like a shriek. Dragons and Gowoks. It's real. All real. Can I touch him? He reached out a shaken hand, but pulled it back when Blackie's eyes focused on him. She's a her, not him. She says she's never had this request before, and she's amused, but she accepts. Don't overdo it, though. She couldn't keep some venom out of her voice. Those people were going to kick her out. Family she'd never known. The only family she still had were abandoning her just like that. Blackie sniffed, stirring up a cloud of dust, causing Steetum to cough. Again, feel it. Heat. Why? I'm angry, Nedek said in her mind. She continued out loud. They're the ones who put me through everything I've been through these past years. They should have told me the truth. The people are saved. Was it all a setup? So much violence? Why make me... <gasps> she gasped as realization for the core of her anger dawned on her. A guilt she'd been carrying, slumping her shoulders like a weight pressing down. She whispered, why make me kill all those people and creatures for a false reason? You have been listening to Nadek, Chapter 27, Emotional Connection. Adventured, lived through and narrated by myself, Nadek. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. If you like this show and would like to support it, a good way to do that is share it around to everyone you know. An even better way is to rate and review it on iTunes or whichever podcatcher you use. Don't forget to follow the show or subscribe. Looking over at it, but and then red nose. Kitty dug in his dick, or if they had a special, steal him still hit. Oh, I forgot most humans. <clears throat> Perhaps that's how I guessed. Perhaps that's how I... Perhaps that's how I guessed. <sighs> yes. 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 Chapter 27. Emotional Correct.